Welcome back to Hoops HD, everybody. This is our continuing 2019-2020 preseason coverage. I'm your host, Chad Sherwood, joined by John Stalika, David Griggs, John Titel, as we are doing four podcasts simultaneously. Yes. There, American, up there, Atlantic 10. Yep. West Coast, down West below Coast us. West Coast, down there. Hit and, play at all four at the same time, correct? Right, yeah. And, Chad, uh, the, the we had a huge – Huge happening in the off season. I think we need to start with this. We're talking Mountain West, by the way. But, but, but go yeah, ahead. the Mountain West. Oh yeah, what conference is this? I, I'm so excited. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yes, yes. We are going to talk about the biggest news in the Mountain West off season. David, you want to break the news? Tonight. Yes, yes. Let's get this on this this monstrosity. This assault on the retinas is gone. They have <laughs> like they they turned their floor into what a basketball floor should look like and gotten rid of what looks like. You, you know, someone that ate a bunch of crayons and then went and threw up all over the floor. This monstrosity is gone. Their team is still terrible. Their floor is at least a little better. Yes. Can we have a moment of silence for the court, please? <laughs> moment of silence for San Jose State's court. No. The cartoon Why do we want to even give it that? It was horrible. <laughs> uh, but let's talk. Let's talk. Instead of talking about the worst team in the conference, let's talk. go and talk about the what should be the best team. Uh, John T., uh, who is that team and why? <laughs> I think it is not up for debate. I think it is Utah State. This is a team coming off a NCAA tourney appearance. They lost to Washington last March. Um, the two big players are Nemius Cueto, who decided to come back to school, despite being the conference rookie of the year and defensive player of the year, and Sam Merrill, their senior star shooting guard and the defending conference player of the year and conference tourney MVP. My favorite fact possibly in all of college basketball is about Sam's family. His wife, Canyon, plays soccer for the Aggies. His sister, Molly, is the assistant coach there. So I can't wait to hear what the hell goes on with that family at Thanksgiving. Um, a nice non-conference schedule, LSU, St. Mary's, and Florida. Um, plenty of opportunities for some tier one wins, as they say. And we got Coach Craig Smith coming back for his second year as the defending conference coach of the year. And as David can attest, the one way you get to succeed in college basketball is to be an assistant at Nebraska. Colorado State <laughs> and North Dakota State for the one, the only, Tim Miles. Yes, and uh, Tim Miles, I mean, he's left his footprint on this program. Oh, well, David, you agree but, no one, but not on anything else in the league. How, well, how, how about Utah State, David? How, go, how good is this team? If, if they are good. the clear favorite, I mean, how deep can, get, can they get in March? Um, I, I mean, you got to say, I, I don't want to say that I'm expecting them to get to the second weekend uh, that because that's really hard to do. But I think that they're in the top half of the bracket. Maybe we're talking about them for a protected seed because I think this is going to be a team with a very bloated record. And they're giving themselves the chances out of conference, as Tytel already mentioned. This is a really good team. Do I – Am I expecting them to get that far? I wouldn't go that far, but it wouldn't shock me at all if they did get to the Sweet 16 or maybe even further, depending on how the bracket breaks. But I, I believe they are in the preseason rankings. If they're not, they will be soon enough. And I think they're one of the 25 best teams in the country, and I think that they're easily in on the first ballot and wearing white in the round of 64. Uh, well, Stalika, as we mentioned, we actually see Utah State with a strong non-conference schedule, correct? That's going to be correct. They'll have uh, the games against uh, LSU at St. Mary's, BYU, South Florida, and Florida, but they're going to be easing into the bathtub, as it were, with uh, games against Montana State. A deceptively strong game against Weber State, but beyond that, it's going to be uh, three bye games going into the LSU game. It's a lot different than the, than the Stu Morell era when uh, the Utah State had these huge bloated records but never played anybody. Right, yeah, the complete inverse of that. Now, uh, it, do we remember Wild Bill? Do we have a picture of Wild Bill? Do you have a picture of Wild Bill? I think we might have a picture of Wild Bill. Let's well, I guess while well, David looks at the picture of Wild Bill, um, Titel, let me ask you beyond Utah State team, UT, is there anybody else in this conference that you think could seriously contend for an NCAA tournament bid? Uh, contend, yes. Um, I think that it is not going to be the Mountain West shining year um, even though they had four teams win 20 games last year, uh, most of the conference finished with a sub-500 record. Um, Nevada won 29 games last year, and even though they lost a ton of players, they do bring back some guys in Jazz Johnson. <laughs> the year. Hold on a second. Oh, 
I didn't know they were bringing back <laughs> Wild Bill. <laughs> oh, I, I don't God. know if they are, but they should be. This is Wild Bill. We love fans and we love super fans, and Wild Bill may have been the greatest super fan of all. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Ty Ty, we cut you off there. <laughs> As you should. I just don't know how I can follow that. Uh, Jazz Johnson, the defending Conference Six Man of the Year. Um, tons of transfers at Nevada. We got Nizre Zuza from Bryant. We got Jalen Harris from La Tech. And we have a new coach, a guy you might have heard of, Steve Alford. I can't believe it's been uh, almost 35 years since he won a gold medal at the 1984 Olympics. Um, you might have thought that uh, Patrick Ewing was the only coach left from that team now that Chris Mullen's gone, but Alford's still hanging around. He could win his 600th career game this year. Just think about that. There's a lot of great coaches who never win 600 games in college. Part of it is the fact that he's been coaching forever, but still, if he gets the 600 wins and you couple that with the 1987 title at Indiana and the two-time All-American status and the leading scorer – in Indiana history when he graduated, that's quite a resume. Yeah, and I, and, you know, talk about Steve Alford, say what you will about how he did at UCLA, but he's, he had proven success in this conference, uh, David. Yeah, he did, and he had proven success at UCLA, not at the end, but prior to that. Uh, he did decently well at Iowa. He was really good at Southwest Missouri State. I think he's going to do a really good job. And I, in my opinion, if there's going to be a second team that sneaks in, it's them. Well, I kind of look at another team, though. When you look over at New Mexico, um, it's a lot of newcomers, but you've got transfers here. Jaquan Lyle from Ohio State, Vance Jackson from UConn, Carlton Bragg from Kansas, J.J. Caldwell from A&M. Uh, there's talent on this team. It, it, it is, and if they can somehow put it all together, couldn't they make a run at it? Yeah, bid? I could kind of see that. Okay. Well, Ty Ty, what do you think? Could, but uh, I'll take the under. I don't think that uh, this uh, is going to happen, but good. Okay. Uh, Salika, is there anybody else that you're looking at in this league besides those three? Well, you'd also be looking at the uh, usual suspect, and that's going to be San Diego State. They don't have their top players from last year, but you still get a decent core that's going to be moving up as far as Matt Mitchell, Jordan Shackle, Nathan Mensa, and Akeka Rock. But – at the same time, they'll be part of the Las Vegas Invitational that includes Creighton, Texas Tech, and Iowa. But other than that, a lot of garbage in between. So not much to look forward to until you get into Mountain West play. Uh, David, what about Boise State? That, that's a team that I, they, I know they went 13-20 and 20 last year, but, but you know, they got a couple of players. Could, could this team make a little noise? I'm not expecting. I mean, uh, Leon Rice has done a – fantastic job there he's gone to two ncaa tournaments they didn't really have a whole lot of history before he got there uh it was kind of shocking to see them lose 20 last year i don't i mean i think that they're going to be back to winning more than they lose but as far as making noise to the point of ending up on the bubble i don't think so i don't know Tytel with jessup and hobbs i mean isn't there some some good players on this roster I would just like it known that Chad is picking six Mountain West teams. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I'm getting about, I'm getting about five of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I like Cobbs. Uh, 2018 Conference Sixth Man of the Year. Uh, Derek Alston, his dad, is a longtime pro basketball player and coach. And I like Coach Rice, who worked for Coach Fuick and Gonzaga. Um, I just think that it's it's two guys in a backcourt. I think that they're going to get beat up inside. So I don't see it for Boise. Uh, Salika, we have a new head coach in Vegas, a uh, good hire of T.J. Otzelberger. Yeah, that's going to be a nice hire, but one of the reasons they had to hire is because they're basically hitting the reset button with a roster turnover that led to Marvin Menzies going on his way out. So it's going to take a little bit of time for him to get a system in there, but they're about a year or two away from really being a serious contender in the conference. Uh David, oh, if you like returning players, what about the Air Force? Could we see us? Uh, could we see the team at least get over five hundred this year? Oh, yeah, I think that we could see them get over five hundred. I don't think we'll see them do much more than that. But yeah, ton of experience, a lot of discipline, and that's encouraging, you know, since they're in the Air Force. But uh, I think it's going to be one of the better. Like, it's not going to be one of those teams that you just walk into and beat or, or circle as an automatic win. You're going to have to play well to beat them this year. Uh, Titel Nico Carvacho at Colorado State, a heck of a talent there. 
No. Uh, Nico Carvacho is arguably the best rebounder in college basketball in the nation. Uh, the senior big man um, has a couple of parents who are both athletes, so I think he's got the good genes going. Um, not much else uh, around him, so if I were a opposing coach, I would recommend triple teaming him. Uh, but how about quick double teaming him? Average a double double <laughs> and get a bunch of points. I think you just put five guys like Carvacho and you'll win the game. But <laughs> um, uh, Salika, real quick, uh, Fresno State, anything? Fresno State, they'll have a, a few guys returning and Nate Grimes, Noah Blackwell, and New Williams that also going to be more reloading this year. Uh, and David, uh, should we mention Wyoming? Well, we love the front range. Yes, we do. And, and yes. the border war. Yes, we do. The border war. The other border war. The, the other border war. <laughs> the other border war, like the real border war, is starting in, I think, 407 days. We go on the air immediately after this podcast. <laughs> that note, let's, let's run through each of you for any of their final thoughts and tell me uh, how many bids this league gets. Uh, I guess the question is one or more than one, but uh, Titel, let me start with you. <laughs> uh, you were correct to set the bidding at one and a half. Um, I think that – I think Nevada – I can't. I mean, no, I can't. I'll go with two. Um, I don't know how Alfred's going to do it because they lost so much. But the guy has won almost 600 games in his career. And I think that when you can take the remnants of a 29-win team, you'll somehow find a way. Um, as far as the final thought, I send you to the great state of New Mexico to focus on senior power forward Corey Manigo. A transfer from Pitt, if the name rings a bell, the last name that is, that's because his uncle is Earl the Goat Manigoat. Um, when I say playground legend, I mean the playground legend. This is a guy, when you ask Kareem Abdul-Jabbar about the greatest player he ever played with or against, he said Earl Manigot. The guy was six foot and could dunk and could take dollar bills off the backboard. Um, if Corey is a tenth of the player his uncle was, he's going to be just fine. Salika. I'm also going to go ahead and stay in the state of New Mexico. Last year at this time, we were talking about how Paul Weir was going to be doing and getting his team ready. Now, this year, as of February, we can introduce him as Dr. Paul Weir after he got his doctorate in education at Ball Places, New Mexico State. So, congratulations. <laughs> okay. And are you at one team or more than one? I'm going to have uh, Utah State getting in, but I think we're going to have a, a bid stolen out of this conference. So whether it's New Mexico or Nevada is going to be up for grabs because I think there's just too many landmines to really run the table in the conference tournament in Vegas. Well, uh, David, I know that I you wanted me to pick six teams. I'm actually going for the sit with this, as it says, one bid league. I think Utah State runs the table. Well, yeah. w w runs away with the conference regular season and gets the automatic bid. But what right. are your thoughts? Well, I, I think so. Like, you can't – I'm not going to guess what's going to happen in the conference tournament, but when you ask how many bids, if you were to change that question to how many teams inside the bubble, I think it's one, and it's it's right. Utah State. Now, I think they're way inside the bubble, but when I look at San Diego State, I mean, they, they only – I know that the media and the coaches are big on them. They still have – they still lost a lot from last year. New Mexico, you know, while while I think they're good, I don't think they're NCAA tournament good. I love – I mean, I really like Steve Alford as a coach. I don't think he has the pieces there yet to be an NCAA tournament team. And I just don't think anyone else is even worth explaining why I don't think they're going to get there because it's sort of like explaining – why Florida is hot in the summertime. Everybody knows why no one else is getting there. And when Boise State's the second best team, you, 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 we, you can all go back and replay this because I'm the one that told you about it. But yeah. <laughs> And I know like Chad's got seven, eight teams going into the NCAA tournament. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking San Jose State's chances too. You know, without yeah. those cartoon Spartans, who knows? Right. Uh, but on that note, on behalf of John Salika, David Griggs, John Titel, I'm Chad Sherwood. Well, you know, what, you know what could make this league better, Chad? Oh, okay, what? I mean, I got it right here. More cartoons? Yeah, more cartoons. It is uh, LaSalle women's head coach, Mountain McGillivray. You mean the Mountain West McGillivray Conference? Yeah, the Mountain is that West. Right? Oh, oh. oh, we definitely are going off the air now. Right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, American and A-10 up there, West Coast right below us. Talk to you again real soon.